Hello everyone, today we are building an RTS camera in Unreal Engine using C++ and enhanced input actions, similar to the classic camera in the Total War series. This camera enables movement in all directions using the WASD keys and rotation by holding the middle mouse button. We will start with the basic setup using the top-down starter template in Unreal Engine. Remember to enable C++ in your project. Our build requires two classes, a player pawn and a game mode class. Typically the game mode class is included in the starter templates, but creating your own is straightforward if needed. First let's develop our own camera pawn, name it RTS camera pawn. Setting up the game mode is simple. Its primary function is to designate the camera pawn as the default player pawn class. As you can see, you can utilize the F class finder utility to search for a dedicated blueprint implementing your class. This is actually a good option to tweak and customize your camera later on. Please keep in mind to name your blueprint exactly as specified in the game mode. After compiling the project, our custom C++ class replaces the template pawn. When you start the game, your camera is centered in the origin in the world. Now, let's go one step further and create a blueprint class. Search for your created class to inherit from it. Unfortunately, as the blueprint didn't exist before, it will not be used by the current game instance until we either restart or recompile the game. You can compile the project again through the live coding feature or just close Unreal and recompile it through the editor. The game should then use the blueprint class as our default pawn. Now, let's actually dive into implementing our own camera. We will start by moving the tick and setup input functions to the protected section of the class. Both of these functions are defined as protected in the parent class, so they shouldn't be public in our class either. Let's begin by implementing the easiest function, the begin play. Any real-time strategy game needs to show the mouse cursor. The begin play is the perfect location to enable the mouse. Here we can find the controller of our class and cast it to the player controller. The player controller contains a function to show or hide the mouse cursor. Next up, we can start implementing the tick function. The tick function will handle camera movement based on user input. For this, we need a variable to set the current keyboard based movement speed. We can also create a variable for the player controller. As we already initialized the player controller in the begin play, it's more performant if we don't do it again in the tick function. As you can see, you can also declare variables inside conditions in C++. This is really useful if the variable is only used inside the condition and it acts like a guard. We will prioritize keyboard inputs like the WASD keys over the mouse-based movement. Only if the keyboard-based movement speed is zero, we will get the mouse position and calculate if there needs to be any movement. So, mouse movement is determined by the cursor's proximity to the viewport's edges with a customizable padding. You can calculate it by getting the size of the viewport and defining a padding where the mouse is near the edge. Let's say if the mouse is on the left side of the screen and it is between 0 and 50 pixels, then we need to move to the left. If the mouse is on the right side and it is greater than the viewport width minus some padding, 
then move the camera to the right. The same applies to moving forward by checking the mouse position Y axis and the viewport height. For the padding we should create a variable so you can easily customize the screen edges later on. For movement calculations, we should exclude the z-axis, as our camera operates on a 2D plane and we will reserve the z-axis movement for the mouse wheel. The new forward location is then calculated by using the forward vector and the input movement speed multiplied by a custom defined movement speed and delta time. Likewise, the same applies again for moving sideways. Calculate the new location by adding both the forward and the sideways locations. And finally, let's also create a new variable for the movement speed of the camera. As a default movement speed, I use 500 on both axes but we will probably need to modify these values later on when we get a feel of how fast or slow 500 even is. Let's also set a default screen edge padding of 50 pixels per side. Now your project should allow camera movement via moving the mouse to the edges of the screen. Uh, you can always adjust the padding for better responsiveness. You can probably also use a padding of maybe 100 pixels or 200 if 50 feels too narrow. Okay, in order to easily switch between the header and the implementation file, let's also move the header to the right side of the screen. Next up comes the fun part, the enhanced input actions. We will add the mapping context requiring a cast from the local player's input subsystem to the enhanced local player subsystem and prepare for event handling from input actions. Let's also add a variable for the mapping context so we can add the mapping context through the blueprint and customize our keys through the Unreal Editor. Okay, nice. Now, the enhanced input system is actually initialized, but nothing would happen. We need to react to the events provided by the input actions. Therefore, let's cast and get a reference to the enhanced input component of our player. Also, please make sure that you include both of the enhanced input component and a subsystem header. The WASD keys will be our move action. Let's react to them being pressed by adding event bindings for the triggered and completed events. The triggered function will be called when any of the WASD keys are pressed and the completed will be called when they are all released. Let's also create a binding for zooming. We will use the mouse wheel to change the height of the camera. I will call it camera height action in this case because I think zoom is not the correct word for this, but you can also call it zoom or any other name. We will only need the triggered event for this. Okay, let's also add a functionality to rotate the camera. Let's use the started, cancel and completed events for this. As quickly pressing the middle mouse button would also result in a cancelled event and we don't want to be deadlocked in a rotating state. The last action that is needed is the look action. This is actually the place where we rotate our camera if the middle mouse button was pressed at all. Okay, we have bound our events but didn't actually create any event function. Let's do it now. The triggered events provide an input action value as a parameter. The cancel and completed events are without any parameter. After creating the event functions, we also need to create the action properties. These will be then configured through the Unreal Editor and assigned to our blueprint. 
all of these actions are just basic object pointers with a U property specifier. Awesome! Last but not least, let's also create our event functions on the CPP side. When using Rider, you can easily generate the function definitions. When using Visual Studio Code, you need to unfortunately create them manually. Before we get to the final implementation, let's set up our enhanced input actions through the editor. First up, create an input mapping context. Also, create a new folder for our RTS input actions. Then create four actions for the move, look, rotate and camera height action. For both of the move and look action, change the value type to axis 2D. And for the camera height, change it to axis 1D as the mouse wheel is just a float between minus 1 and 1. Okay. Next up, let's create the mapping for these actions in the mapping context. Unfortunately, the names for my input actions overlap with the starter template, so I decided to rename my input actions to also include the name RTS. Okay, great. For the move action, I assign the WASD keys. Take care when assigning the correct modifiers to these keys. There is a great guide on the Unreal Engine documentation I will link in the description below, which goes through this exact configuration. Awesome! The camera height is easy to set up as it's just using a mouse wheel axis. I use the negate modifier here as it feels weird if scrolling down doesn't move the camera upwards. But you can also check if the negate modifier is actually needed in your case. For enabling the rotation itself, we just use the middle mouse button and for the mouse look we only need to use the 2D mouse axis. Okay, the mapping context is now configured, but we still need to assign both of the context and the input actions to our blueprint. So, let's just assign it quickly one by one. Now we can finally come to the last step of this tutorial, which is the actual implementation of the input event functions. And these are surprisingly easy. The move action triggered event will just set the current input movement speed to the provided parameter value and the completed one will reset it to zero. For the camera height action, we just add the input value to the z-axis of our pawn's location and for this, we need another variable for the actual zoom speed. Also, we don't have access to the ticks delta time, so we would need to use the apps delta time here.
Let's create the camera height zoom speed variable and set a default value in the constructor. For the rotation, we create yet another variable, which we call should rotate. This will be a boolean and we can use this in the look triggered function as a guard to enable the rotation if the middle mouse button was pressed. So for the last part, the actual look action using the middle mouse button, we can get the look vector from the input parameter. If the middle mouse button is pressed and therefore the should rotate is true, we can rotate the camera by adding the look vector to the pitch and yaw. For this we need the last variable, a rotation speed, which I just set to 50 degrees in this case. And last but not least, we should take care of the constructor because some essential parts are yet missing. Let's initialize our camera to have a tilted rotation of 30 degrees. Let's also create a default scene route for our pawn and attach a camera component to it. Don't forget to create a U property variable for the camera component. Now, with this done, we can finally test our RTS camera. Unfortunately, there's a bug in our code, and this is due to the lifecycle of our class and when certain functions are called. Unfortunately, the begin play function is called after the setup of the player input component, so accessing the player controller results in a null pointer exception. Let's fix this by getting the player controller in the setup player input component. Finally, our camera works like the legacy camera found in Total War games. For the last touches, you can adjust the blueprint values and the camera height to improve the feeling of the camera. I hope this video was useful and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them through the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and see you in the next one.